I feel like you should be you you should be in a therapy uh, session right now instead of at the science fair. And okay, I'm glad it happened. I'm just gonna take the potato. I'm gonna no take, no oh okay it is it's it is the, the last thing I that yep, reminds you of your parents. Joining me today on the Uniweb Interview Show, Sandy <laughs> Lee, Melville, author, director, creator, green hair aficionado. It hasn't always been this way, but yeah. <laughs> is that from eating a lot of vegetables? It Sam is. I am actually, I only eat green things. <laughs> Sandy Lee, thank you so much for joining me on the show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside. How are you today? <laughs> I am good today. <laughs> hey, am, uh, have a speech impediment. Don't make fun of me. I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I apologize. I take. I do improv, so I just end up rolling with it. <laughs> oh my gosh! Do you really? Yeah. Sorry, I threw that in there. <laughs> that's amazing. But it's not amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. Improv. I'm gonna poke fun at you this entire interview. I Good. just want you to know. That's okay. I'm used to it. Okay. I uh, I get picked on all the time. Big time. I'm bullied nonstop. So you <laughs> you're an author, you're a director, and you do and you do improv. Yeah. But Let's... not that's just like for fun. That's not a... yeah. You don't want to like get on a, a show or act or like go on stage and Oh, I mean I I'm not good at it. I just do it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but being good at improv is pretty subjective. Fair, fair. Yeah. <laughs> I I think I'm a really good improvisationalist. Mm -hmm. I'm never, I can tell by your words. <laughs> yeah, I just make them up. <laughs> That's part of the fun. Mm -hmm. It is. So so I want to get to that. I do want to talk about that. But first and foremost, I do want to ask you about your book, The Fields. All right. Which fields are you describing in this book? Well, um, so the fields, there's, there, there are fields of mud. <laughs> and, the best kind. Yeah, aren't they? Um, so basically, uh, I, well, I'll just kind of explain the plot because that's necessary to understand. Yeah. <laughs> um, so <laughs> <Perfect>. <laughs> so uh, it's, the, the story takes place in a village. Um, there's actually four villages that are, are spoken of, um, and each has a field of mud at their center, um, okay. where everyone in the village, mostly everyone in the village, is from the field of mud. So they they've been they've been buried under the not they they are under the mud and they get dug up and then incorporated into society. So that's like where they're from, like their origins, um, and so that's kind of like the the society that like. There are people whose job it is to dig people up out of the mud, and then uh, they're mudborn. Um, <laughs> How do they get down every, there? That's the big question. They don't, really, you know, this is also a village that is just has done this for years, so they they don't really question that right off the bat. <laughs> is there um, any sense of like maybe they're digging up the dead? Is that how they feel? Oh no, well they're they're alive. Um, that so it's it's usually children that. Are, are dug up but sometimes um people will fall back under and get dug up back like as adults um so it's it's like it's like these fields are birthing them basically um but there are people who are born like the regular human way <laughs> um how was that actually, hmm? how was that um like from the womb what's a <laughs> womb <laughs> The womb of a of a of a human being from so like you and me. How how were you born? I know you 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 just can't believe the stork theory. <laughs> well, my mother tells me that one day a man fell from the stars and placed me here. Ah, so that's you. Yeah. So you, see, you have your own origin story. <laughs> I do. <laughs> well, okay, so. Uh, the main character, Mukisa, is actually flesh-born instead of mud-born. Flesh. Um, okay. So she was, she was born of someone from the village um, who's actually the sheriff. 
but it's kind of looked down upon to be fleshborn because they're all from the mud. So they're like, oh, you're not one of us. You're not like from the mud. So is there um, some guy out there having sex with dirt? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's I'm going not gonna on? Tell- no, <laughs> it's not that. <laughs> There's some dude out there like humping the fields. Just like. You know, taking people ah, from these are my babies. babies and throwing them in mud. <laughs> Did you think about that when you were writing the story? Like, I'm sure you thought of every possible way it would be conceivable to conceive, right? Yeah. yeah. I've been a, a conception connoisseur. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, <devoured>. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. Does this work? Okay. Yep. <laughs> Uh, no, so it, it's, yeah, it, it was very odd writing, like, trying to come up with the, the, the world that this took place in, because it did, it honestly did not start off, I had, like, the, the frame of the story, and I didn't have the reasoning behind it, I was like, I don't understand how this works, and then suddenly, yeah. like, halfway through the process, I was like, oh my god, I get it, <laughs> and that's when the real writing began. <laughs> Well, it's an incredible concept that you're that you're going after. Like it, it's, I've never I've never heard of anything like that before, um, in literature. Thanks. Did have you? I mean, have you read anything similar to what the, that kind of plot line or storyline? Um, not not necessarily oh. like that. Like I I guess um, it's it's kind of inspired by you know like there are so many different stories of like alien cultures and you're learning like yeah. well, what makes that alien culture work not that this is like considered an alien culture because they're they're human beings but um mm-hmm. it just kind of like um you know if if someone is born a certain way or lives a certain way like how does that affect the rest of their world and yeah i, I find that super interesting um and I, I like the idea of like having like this because for a good chunk of the book like y- yeah it is the question is like why are they born from a field of mud I don't understand and then you slowly right. start to like piece together some stuff so <laughs> is it like trying to ask the question does it make a difference really like if they're born from mud or from flesh uh, well to the villagers it means a lot yeah but um, it's important yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't want to give too much away. <laughs> I understand. But, so, do they have superpowers, like super mud powers or something? No, they don't. They're just they're they're regular people once they come out of the mud. But the thing is, um, they're so there's these specters is what they're called. They're kind of like these flying beasts. Uh, I'm really good at describing things when I'm not writing. <laughs> Um, Super stupid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so there, there's these creatures basically that uh, kind of fly over the field, and they they're uh, they're considered like they they're even called at one point like the fields lackeys. Like they they're kind of monitoring the field, and and uh, sometimes they'll attack, and sometimes they just kind of like lurk and mm. watch. And um, that is also a thing that they are just. The villages are used to that like they have to make sure like okay we're digging now and make sure the specters don't get in the way and and like hurt some money or something so um but uh yeah I'm so is, to, there, I'm, is there a main character that we follow in this in this story yes so that was mukisa and she is um the sheriff's daughter she is flesh born um uh and the in the in the very first chapter uh we find out that um, her sister has, who is also fleshborn, uh, gets knocked into the mud. So she goes under and she's she falls into the mud. Um, okay. And so, like in in this world, like you know, she wasn't originally from the mud, but they're like, well, she's just going back to the, the birthplace, so maybe it's good. So the the whole village is kind of like, you know. Well, too bad. <laughs> and Mookie's not happy. I guess she's gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so she just disappears. Have they sent any, like, scuba divers down there? Well, so they, they're, it's a very strange relationship with the field. So it's, it's kind of like the field is, is like their creator. So they, they treat it as, as such, like, 
it's kind of a religion. So they, they don't mm. really question it a lot. Um, and that's kind of like, well, once Mukisa's sister falls under and there's other stuff that starts happening, she's, she's like, okay, can we, can we talk about this? <laughs> and can we like actually deal with the fact that um, we don't know why things are the way that they are? <laughs> I like that. I like the stories where there's there's one person who kind of wakes up to the idea that's like, what the hell is going on around here? Like, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's important because I, mean, I feel like that's what happens. And I mean, it does happen. It happens in real life, in real religious, religion called religious cultures. And, and throughout humanity, it's happened where people are like, wait a second. What are we doing? <laughs> like, what's <laughs> happening right now in society? Something needs to change. Something we need to start questioning this and stop just like going along with the flow of letting people fall into mud pits. And well, oh well, <laughs> see you later. <laughs> They're just going back to their creator. <laughs> right, just going back to the creator. <clears throat> That's why I want to be shot off into a out of a cannon when I die. Just heading back, back to, to the- <laughs> heading back to the sky, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, if you fell from the stars, that's where you need to go, man. I need a big cannon. You need to go back. We'll get you a cannon. <laughs> maybe I can, maybe, uh, maybe Elon Musk will build me a rocket to blast me off into space. <laughs> definitely. That's definitely a thing that will happen. <laughs> I think th- those are the new sarc- or new uh, um, pyramids. Instead of pyramids, we're going to start building people rockets to blast them off into space <laughs> with all their worldly possessions. As long as you go past the point where there's gravity, then it won't cause any issues. <laughs> That's right. You just start floating away. Yeah. So th- the fields is out now. It's available on Amazon, right, for uh, yep. digital download and yeah. uh, print copy. How long did it take you to write this this book? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I came up with the so I'm 30. I came up with the idea when I was in high school. <laughs> Um, and then it just kind of floated around in my head for a few years. And then, um, about, oh God, 10 months. Do you remember what you were doing in high school when you thought of this? (laughs) Um, well, I was actually, so I was, I was taking writing classes for, uh, I, not for anything, just because I was taking writing classes. Um, and I did, I remember like the specific image of where I got the idea and it, it didn't really like formulate into a story until later, but, um, I had like this image of, like hands just like reaching out from like muddy hands from a, f- a field of mud. So like, I don't, I don't know why I had that image in my head, but that was where it came from. Um, Hormones. Hormonal. Yeah. Yeah. You know, teenager. teenagers think weird things. <laughs> yeah, we, we do. <laughs> I agree. I'm a teenager still. <laughs> <laughs> we all are at heart. That's right. Um, so that's where the idea came from, but I didn't really start working on it until like almost the end of college. And then I didn't start getting really serious about it until probably three years ago. Um, Mm. So it's been a really long time and I I probably should have focused more. (laughs) This story could have been written a long time ago, but I finished it. That's amazing. Congratulations on finishing it. How did it feel when you finally got this story finished and out? Was it like a eureka? Um, Oh my God, I did it kind of? It was kind of like... And I don't, I I don't know if this is a common thing for writers to feel, but it was like, oh my God, Sam, you've been working on this for too long. You need to, you need to find, you need to find a a stopping point. (laughs) And then I, um, I did, and I was worried that that was like not enough. But then when it actually started, like feedback has been good. (laughs) So (laughs) I think, I think I, I stopped at the right point. I think I didn't have to keep going. (laughs) Well, I love the idea of the story. Um, Definitely love the idea of the story. I mean, I haven't read it yet. I, I want to check it out. But I think that is a totally a common theme amongst writers to like want to be. I think maybe even people in general just to when any kind of creative medium where they're, we're putting our feelings, our emotions, our hearts, our soul on us out there for the public. We want it to look as presentable as possible. Right we don't want yet. to throw it out there with like a a shirt with holes in it and. Oh. We don't want to be covered in mud when we go out in public. We want to look clean, you know? (laughs) And so it's definitely normal. But, I mean, um, yeah, that's a a cool thing that you got that you finally got it finished and published. How long has it been out for? It came out in December of 2018, so a few months. Cool. And you've gotten some feedback so far? Yep. Um, Not like a 
not like overwhelming. I'm, I'm, I'm not like a bestseller or anything, but <laughs> um, I've gotten, yeah. So there's uh, reviews trickling in on Amazon, but all seem to be pretty pod- positive crossing fingers have, there. <laughs> have you, um, what have you done in terms of marketing and, and trying to um, show off your book? So yeah. Get- um, so I'm terrible at marketing, but <laughs> uh, that's that's something I'm 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 striving on working on because I am working on another book and I'm I figure like I'm gonna have to do this again so I'm gonna be practicing my marketing skills. Um, but I guess so I I sent it to a few different. Um, yep, words are hard. I sent a few advanced copies out. Um, Arc readers. To, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, to see if, like, you know, review it so that they could, uh, once once it got released, that people would know that it it was a thing to read. <laughs> um, and you're so good um, at improv. <laughs> yeah, I don't totally see exactly. <laughs> you're nailing it. You're gonna be oh, yeah. your SNL in no time. Oh yeah. Um, I've just, I've just been basically trying to, to, um, you know, I have a, a Facebook page that I promote it on. I, I try to promote it, um, through Twitter and I have like, a, a blog that I write that's not really a blog. It's more just like journal entries. <laughs> um, but sometimes yeah. I promote it on that. Um, and yeah, stuff like that. It's, I'm, it's, I'm not good. I'm, I need to learn more. <laughs> about promotion this is my fault in life i feel like i think it's i almost feel like it's it's either one way or the other like you either have a book that is so transcendent and i feel like this is for anybody that people want have to read it or you're a person who is so valuable that people want to read your book um like it doesn't matter what you write. Like that's why so many celebrities now get deals for books because it's oh, like yes. whatever you're popular. They're just talking this, about this their stuff. life. <laughs> Everybody yeah. wants to know. Exactly, and it's it's because publishers know that they can put money behind a superstar, and it doesn't matter what they write. They could write about farts and chicken chickens dancing in a mud field all day long, and they get you know, and they'll sell millions of copies. Yep. it's it's all the face. It's all the fa- but it is it is trying to figure out which side of that you lay on and trying to promote and find your audience too, right? Yeah. So what, what what audience or what genre would you say this falls into? Um, it, I've been promoting it as sci-fi and fantasy. I I feel like it's more of a sci-fi, but it reads as a fantasy. Um, okay. So that's kind of a weird thing. Um, I've actually I am way more of a sci-fi fan than I am of a fantasy fantasy fan. Not that fantasy isn't great, but I, I wrote it as a sci-fi, and then I was like, I need this as a fantasy. <laughs> when, so, you, when you say it reads as a fantasy, do you mean like it's got more uh, like poetic it has, description? And... Um, it just in in the terms of like it feels like this like otherworldly like magical like there are specters that fly in the sky (laughs) right and just kind of like and it's it's not necessarily like listed it's not it's not described as magic but it's it's kind of like this it's got a kind of magical quality to it even though it does have explanations later on in the book but yeah which is why i think it's (laughs) sci-fi why would you tell why would why would or what would you tell somebody that they need to read your book? Why, what would you say to them? You need to read my book because X, Y, Z. Uh, yeah. So uh, I, well, I would say that you should read my book because it makes you think about, like, I, I guess it, it kind of reminds you that you got to step out of, out of complacency. Um, mm-hmm. I'm gonna. I sound really philosophical right now. It's <laughs> good. <laughs> There's just, uh, and that's that's the fun of sci-fi too. Is, is, is like it, it tells something about the human condition, and I think yeah. um, that's the fun part of, of reading a sci-fi book is that you you're like, okay, cool, this like crazy world that I'm reading about, but ha- this actually does really apply to my life, and um, I don't know. I just want people to think. So you think it'll help give people a deeper understanding of the human condition 
and why we need to step out of complacency in our own lives. Yeah. Ask questions and and do some digging. And also... Literal and figurative digging. Yeah. (laughs) Get out in the fields. There could be people buried out there. You don't know. (laughs) You could could rescue somebody. (laughs) Wow. Yeah. You definitely could. (laughs) I know that's a hard question to answer. And I only ask it because you said... You know, you want to get better at marketing the book. So I wanted to see if, yeah. w- what you had. <laughs> I, yeah, no, I wanted fair. to make you uncomfortable as possible. So, Of course. That is the goal. <laughs> it's my goal in life is to make people uncomfortable. <laughs> That's why I do these things in my bedroom. Yeah, I would. I, I should have done it in the back. Lure someone into your bedroom even and have a camera running. <laughs> That's right. Get in here. <laughs> I have questions to ask you. So let's talk about let's talk about your short films because you don't just write um, sci-fi fantasy, but you also have written some short films and, and directed, correct? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I was I was a I went to school for film uh, production and then kind of just after I mean I made a few films in college um, and then once I graduated I kind of focused on writing for a while, but uh, I'm getting back into actually making as well. And I'm actually uh, uh, working with an, a nonprofit organization called Vid Jam. Um, a little shout out there. Um, that Vid is Jam? Vid Jam, like V-I-D-J-A-M. Vid Jam. Vid yeah. Jam. Gotcha. Okay. Um, and it's, so I, I live in central Pennsylvania, so it's promoting, you know, encouraging people to make film in central Pennsylvania area. Um, oh, and cool. so we uh, we run like the you know like the forty eight hour film competitions. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we do like our own version of that, where it's basically just like just make something. <laughs> like the goal is to use your voice and and put something out there and make something. That sounds um, so fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, so once I got connected with the jam, because I mean we do stuff that's more than that. Like we have filmmaker meetups and we do workshops and stuff like that. But um, I've been getting back into actually like creating film as opposed to just writing short things. Um, So yeah, I have a few, uh, I have a few films posted on my website, but um, a lot of them are are college projects, but there are a few that are are recent stuff. Um, And your website's sammyleem.com? Yep. I use that username for everything. (laughs) (laughs) I'm looking at it right now. I got your got your stuff pulled up. I want to see if I can pull up the short films. So, are there any short films you've done that like you're really really proud of, or are they all like your kids that you're like, I love them so much, all the same? (laughs) Um, Well, there's actually one that's not on there because. I'm terrified of putting it online. Um, but it was actually my, my senior thesis project in college, and it was called Metamorphosis. And um, I shot the it The trailer's on online. Yeah, yeah. That is there. Uh, it's The actual short is about 17 minutes, um, and I just haven't put it up because I am human. <laughs> um, but I'm, yes. I'm, I, you know what? I'm going to put it up now. <laughs> Um, That's right. But it, uh, I shot it on 16 millimeter, and it's, uh, it's not, it's not visually the best quality. Not because it was shot on 16 millimeter, because that was actually really cool that I, I was able to do that in college because I could afford it when I was in college. Um, but it's just not, it's not like, you know, shot with a red or you know, like a fancy like 4K yeah. camera or whatever. So it was, it's. Uh, it's definitely uh, visually not my best work, but I really like the story. Um, and it's about a little boy who has a brain tumor. Um, okay. And so like, you know, the like the monsters under the bed type thing. Um, well, he actually sees those monsters. So, uh, um, and that's like kind of, you know, hallucinations from his tumor. But he also has this imaginary friend who is like, a kind of like a, an older brother figure that um, kind of like is there for him through all that. Um, and it's it's like the process of like he they the family finds out that he has a tumor and they, they're like trying to figure out what to do and 
um, he's also like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> I'm trying yeah, to fight got, the monster. <laughs> yeah, I got monsters under my bed, people. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's focused yeah. on the problem. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Which is essentially the same problem. They're both fo- focusing on the same problem in different ways. <laughs> different ways, yeah. That sounds really cool. What um do you do you see a big difference in I mean besides the physical um, differences in writing a uh, fiction novel as opposed to writing a short film? It's a lot of difference, and actually, um, that was something that I even when I first started like really working on the fields, I was like, D- should I write this as a as a film like what is this is this good and i chose to do it as a book because there's a lot of kind of inner di- dialogue that the protagonist goes through and okay. um like deep digging <laughs> of like <laughs> i'm just gonna keep rubbing that one in Go for um, it. <laughs> but uh so yeah there's a lot of internal struggle that that she has um and so I, that's why I, I wrote it as a novel um but film is kind of it's it's a very visual media so um yeah. medium i mean um so you know y- you want to tell the story as visually as possible so like you know they they tell you like show don't tell like well for sure show don't tell in film <laughs> um, right just have somebody standing there <laughs> talking to you the whole time it's like uh yeah. <laughs> yeah so there's and that's kind of the fun is like i I like I, I like writing. I don't necessarily just want to stick to one medium because I, I like sure. just telling stories. And so f- trying to figure out like, okay, I have the story. What medium does it fall under? <laughs> like, what does it work best for? It's kind of been fun. Yeah, and that's got to be a tricky a tricky place too because I feel the same way. Like I love to write, but I also love the video medium. And, and just I don't want to um, pigeonhole myself into one and then just stick with it because – you can do so. You can do so much with either one. Like you said, with with writing a novel, there's so much more descriptors you can use and and have your imagination play around for a long time with mm-hmm. inner dialogue and what's going on, um, and and build a whole world basically, yeah, uh, sure. where it'd be tough to do in a short film, I suppose. Um, one more th- so what what's up with the what's up with the improv, homie? <laughs> <laughs> storytelling that's right <laughs> uh, i can't get away from it um so, so i i do long form improv as opposed to short form so i guess i i feel like every time i have a, a, a conversation about improv this is the first thing that i want to say um so i think when most people think improv they think like whose line is it anyway um right. type like then that's short form um so it's more like games that you're playing um whereas long form is more like you get a suggestion and usually sometimes it's just like a one word suggestion. Sometimes it's like, what's the title of our story? Or sometimes you have like, you interview somebody or whatever, but you get uh, a prompt and then you just run with it and you create a story from that. Um, And so uh, a lot of the shows that I do, like this is with other people. This is not like just me standing on a stage by myself. Um, but it's one woman show. Yeah. Um, it's usually like, yeah, you get the suggestion and you go for either a half hour or an hour or, you know, like it's, uh, it's just creating and playing. And that's, it's, it's like when you're a kid and you have like your little action figures or whatever, and you're like, Oh, this now, uh, the princess gets stolen by the dragon and Oh no, we have to go say like it. That's ha- that happens on stage. <laughs> like, it's okay. literally just like creating a story as you go. And it's, but I mean, there's obviously like certain things that you learn as you do improv that it's like, okay, so this is how you craft a story on stage. And it's, it's cool. <laughs> so how long have you been doing it for? Um, about four years, I think. Four years, wow. Four did five you did years? you go to like start taking classes? Yeah, yeah. So um there was actually so there's an improv theater in the city that I live in, um, that uh has I mean it's it's grown since I first started. Like I started taking classes basically when they were like, Do we want to make a theater? <laughs> um and so they have grown now, like there's different levels and all different, like a character class and a, a musical class and stuff like that. So, uh, but 
um, I've taken a bunch of classes and been on diff- like house teams, which is like once you graduate from the classes, they like put you on a team. And then if you want, oh. you can create your own teams. <laughs> so I've done that too. <laughs> That's really cool. Yeah. Four years of that. Do you want to do you want to do a uh, you want to do some improv? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I guess this would be short form, right? Because well, I it depends. We're, we're not gonna we're not gonna go for thirty minutes. <laughs> no. Well, I mean, short form doesn't necessarily like mean short. So the difference between short form and long form is like um, you you're for short form you're given a game and you work within the confines of that game, and long form you're 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 playing you're coming up with the game. So, Do like, you know any for, games? Um, yeah, so for short form stuff, like, for instance, um, uh, oh, God, I'm now just going to blank on all the short form stuff that I know because I, uh, I'm panicking. <laughs> um, Don't no, freak okay. out. No, so, uh, okay, so for example, um, there's a short form game called Shopkeeper, um, and okay. you have... Uh, a, a shopkeeper who like is not supposed to know um and like they go into another room and then you have a few people who are supposed to like come into the shop and they're looking for something and you get suggestions from from people of, like uh, what they're looking for and the shopkeeper has to guess what they're looking for yeah so they have okay. to like once the shopkeeper comes back in the person's like okay uh, i'm looking for something but they can't say what it is so they have to and so like they're to, like say they're looking for a vacuum cleaner that uh actually uh when you vacuum makes everyone high <laughs> like, um and so you have to go in and be like okay well i really need to clean my house um and you know i just got my electricity up and running so that's good so i i and so the shopkeeper keeper, keeper would be like oh okay okay well i have a vacuum right here and then they're like okay great but um it's just let's just try running it and try running it and but I just I just I'm still feeling pretty normal like, I don't do you have anything that will make you want to eat a entire bag of Cheetos yeah in the next, <laughs> in the next five minutes yeah so that's an example of a game like you have that structure that to work right. within um whereas long form could literally be like you ask like okay I need a word and somebody's like potato and a I just did exactly what everyone hates in improv is that I yelled out a food word. <laughs> That's like the most common thing to yell out. Everyone's <laughs> just, always hungry. Yeah. <laughs> potato! Uh, but then like you, from the word potato, you would, um, and sometimes they'll, they'll like on stage, they'll like brainstorm ideas. I was either thinking, things. I was either thinking with potato, we'd start with a farmer in a field or yeah. we'd start, we could do like a, somebody at a science fair a kid a kid at a science fair who no, this is, is perfect okay so you're the kid and i'm the farmer go <laughs> so okay so uh, what's what's um what do you have here it, 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 it looks like everybody around you has these really cool uh science fair projects and what's yours let's see. well my parents were murdered this morning and i oh man i didn't have anyone to help me so well, you know, you should probably should have come up with your science fair project more than earlier than in the morning of. So that's your own fault. <laughs> I was trying to protect my parents from being oh. murdered. Oh, okay. So this is an ongoing thing. How every was day? Somebody, you know what? I I have a farm up uptown, and um, you know, I I bet I know who the murderer was. It's, Does he have a big weird truck? Yeah, he's actually my uh, produce guy. So um, I'm so sorry. He's a, I've been his name working Willie? with him for years. Willie, yep, his name's Willie. I've been thinking of firing him recently because he's just a murderer. He's a murderer. Yeah. Um. So I'm sorry. That's probably my fault. He's still in town because I give him money. <laughs> yeah. Either either way, I I I decided to bring a potato because. And you look at- <laughs> Oh, oh, was, don't think they, about the murder. <laughs> don't think, don't think about all the blood and gore. Just let's well, focus on the Well, my mom was pizza. making, making mashed potatoes oh. when it happened and she didn't get to mash the potatoes. So oh. I brought the potato. There's still blood on it. Look. Oh, okay. Well, th- oh, you know what? It's starting to congeal. So that's no problem. We'll just wipe that off. Yeah. Um, uh, oh, it tastes like her. 
that's a little creepy that you know that. What kind of family have you been living with that you know with the taste of your mother's blood? Um, okay, that's We're fine. We're a family we'll focus of hemoglobins. On... Oh, you know do what? Do you know the hemoglobins? I do. It's I, a very, very proper I think I went to college list. with your mom. Yeah. She died? That's yeah. unfortunate. Her name she was, was Sherbert. Nice... Sherbert. Sherbert, I remember Sherbert well. Sherbert yeah. Melville. She, uh, she, she sat behind me in science class. Um, she always, she always kicked my chair. That, that's actually she was not a real a great bitch. <laughs> yeah, she was. I, I take back the fact that she, I just said she was nice. I don't. I, I, am now remembering all these things about Sherbert. And I don't. I don't. You know what though? You know, her and my dad deserve to die. Oh, that. I am. I'm, I'm very concerned for you. I feel like you should be you you should be in a therapy uh, session right now instead of at the science fair. And okay, I'm glad it happened. I'm just gonna take the potato. I'm gonna no take the, no oh okay it is it it's is the, the last, last thing I that yep seen. remind you of your parents yep okay well um, I'm gonna give this science fair project a a, a C minus because. Uh, no offense, because I know you're mourning, but uh, there's there's not really any science involved. It's just uh, potato. Are you kidding me? It's, Have you um, ever seen CSI? Oh, oh, okay. Well, let's crime scene investigation, lady. That's that's a new angle. You know what? We're gonna bump that up to a, a B minus because I think that you deserve. We could take the blood and semen from this potato. There's even involved. <laughs> There's just my so much mom more. My dad were making dinner and making love details. at the same time. <laughs> you left out some details in the murder. I didn't realize this about Willie. Uh, I'm so sorry. I just I'm, I hope you didn't have to watch. Of course, I watched. <laughs> <laughs> what else would I be doing? <laughs> Friday. <laughs> so that's long for. <laughs> Nailed it. People would love that. Yeah, it's fun. Except be, for, you know, the, the rape part. <laughs> that wasn't, was no, it was just consensual mom and dad. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Not that rape. makes me feel better. Jeez. <laughs> well, monster. I mean, if it's murder, it, it may not be consensual. That was my first thought. No, they were, they were doing it while they were making dinner. Oh, okay. Okay, well, that makes, makes sense. sense. That makes sense now. <laughs> The logic of the world. <laughs> it's got to be tough, like, doing improv when it starts going completely. I guess it makes it more fun, but it just goes... Oh, it always goes completely Outer crazy. space, it's, right? It's, there's, a, there's a rule called um, don't put blue on blue, which just mean, it basically means, like, if there is crazy, there has to be something grounded. Um, right. Like, whether it's a straight man or, like, you know, you're, you have something shown about the environment that's normal like <laughs> if you just go to crazy town that actually does work sometimes but a lot of the time when everybody's something... just in chaos <laughs> yeah it's it very can be probably, probably be pretty overwhelming though yeah so you gotta have you gotta have if you're gonna have blue make sure there's there's another color in the background i like that can't have blue on blue that was really fun <laughs> you're, you're good you're good <laughs> That's coming from a guy with no training whatsoever. I, I, I trust your valid opinion. <laughs> I know a thing or two. <laughs> <laughs> you got some real skills, kid. Chops. I'm going to put Pork that chops. in my, my resume. Should. Matt says I'm that, good. <laughs> that says. <laughs> <laughs> Little weird kid with a potato says I'm good. Yeah, that's that science fair kid. You can, you can use that review anytime for sure. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm going to put it on my website now. <laughs> yeah, your website is very nice. We need to make sure that everyone knows about SammyLeeM.com um, where they can find all your work and it has links to the fields. Um, Thank God, I hope that scene didn't per per like distract you and, and make you decide never to read my book. <laughs> no, if anything... It probably did, actually. But <laughs> I'm sure... No, people love that kind of stuff, from what I'm told. I'm in the know about these things. I have tons you of knowledge. You've interviewed so many people. I know. Almost. Tell me about yourself. 
almost 80 people now in oh, really? two and a half, that's two and a half that's months. Amazing. That's great. I think I'll be at 100 at the end of this month. You should do something special for your hun- hundredth. I am. I'm quitting. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a very special thing. It's going to be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, just quit while you're ahead. Yeah, you got you got 100 down in 100 the back. 100 a lot. <laughs> Like, 100 shows, because I've done more videos than 100, but, like, 100 shows in a couple months is nuts. Yeah, that's impressive. Thank you. I I, I, well, I, here's to 100 more. Hey. Glass. Mazel tov. <laughs> <laughs> I actually Oops. do have a glass, but you didn't, so I felt awkward. Ta-da! <laughs> <laughs> headphones <laughs> Sammy it's been a pleasure getting to talk to you well thanks for having me you're a very fun um, energetic human being vice versa hey that didn't make sense you too that's what I meant <laughs> vice versa vis-a-vis yeah. <laughs> and um, I'm, I'm excited to read the fields and I want everybody else out there to check it out it sounds like a messy, wonderful, good time. Play. Who doesn't like playing in the mud? Yeah. Dig, dig your fingers in. Dig your finger. I gotta cut my fingernails, by the way. These things are getting. I feel like. Who's that guy? Who's that? The movie um, they made the Aviator about. Um, oh. Uh. You know what I'm talking about? He had, like really yeah, fingernails and toenails because mm-hmm. he was like. Afraid to go outside, and I feel like I'm turning into that guy. <laughs> well, you're off to a good start. <laughs> got the fingernails, man. Yep. Next, you just got to work on your toenails. Stop cutting those. I don't. What are we talking about? <laughs> okay, good. Just because you can't see them doesn't mean they're. Cutting. That's true. I mean, I well, I expected them to just be like in the background behind you, like just growing <laughs> like up, overgrown <laughs> by shoulders. Yeah. Well, they're insanely long. They're crazy long. I actually kind of am like that guy, but he Howard Hughes. That's who it is. But he was yes. like, he was like a billionaire. It's because of his toenails. It's the, yeah, the the richer you are, the longer your toenails. Mm-hmm. It's a known fact. That's why clowns have big feet, big shoes, because oh they got long God. toenails too. The secret of clowns. You secret of clowns. You don't know. They don't. They don't tell you this in school <laughs> because it's completely useless. <laughs> <laughs> You have to go to clown school to learn that. <laughs> well, I mean, algebra is useless too, but they teach you that. That's true. Anyway, I'm not going to make fun of school anymore. <laughs> make sure you stay in school, kids. Stay in school, kids. Actually, uh, no, I will I will say this. Algebra is, because this is the thing that I never understood about math until someone explained this. It's not the, it's not what you're learning that's important. It's that you're learning to reason. And so that's what makes, like, they don't. You're never going to use algebra in real life. But if you can sit down and be like, I want to figure this out, that's what they're teaching. They're teaching, like, figuring stuff out. Don't my little nugget of knowledge. (laughs) You're just just making crap up now. That's (laughs) not true. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) No, I I actually did. I heard that from someone. A teacher. It makes sense. Yeah, well, they're trying to stay stay in a job. (laughs) <laughs> it was a no, math it's true. Math, I think math is fantastic. Some people are brains are mathematically uh, designed. Some are made other ways. I don't know how it's done. I didn't create this form. <laughs> I, didn't make, I didn't make these brains. I just know. I, I just know it's very difficult for me. But it's also it's one of those things like showing your work and do and practice, practice, practice. Mm. It's like I feel like you can be good at it if you just practice. Some people can see it better, just like I can see see um, descriptive words better or do things like that better. Yeah. Than some people, but we can all write, you know, or we can all yeah. read, or we can all do some form of math. It Everything, just takes practice. Yeah. If you that's kind of yeah. If you want to do something, even if if you don't, if you're not like a, a gifted writer, like you can still hone that craft and you can yeah get better over time and that's like you have to hone the craft otherwise you're yeah you're not going to write anything good like a writer who just one day is like here's a book i wrote today yeah (laughs) 
I've never that written wouldn't before, be worth reading. Could be, actually. Oh, well, that's true. Could be. If they're a genius. Civil. Or if they're a celebrity. If they're a celebrity. That's... Or a celebrity. Yep. Full circle. <laughs> I'd always like to bring it around. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sammy Lee Melville, thank you so much for joining the Uniweb interview show. It has been a pleasure getting to know you and talk to you. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And I'm excited to to watch your hundredth hundredth show now. I'm gonna I'm excited to see what you come up with. Lots of pressure is putting on you right now. It's gotta be big. That's what she <laughs> said. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I'll I'll uh, start planning for my hundredth show now. Good. And um I'll stress about it until I pass out from That's the plan. stress. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, you have so a much wonderful day. Your... Everyone too. check out SammyLeeM.com and her book, The Fields, now available on Amazon. Thank you. Aye, aye, Captain. Aye. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. You know what? We love you. Love you. Love you. You know what?